We're at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina. Weather clear, track, one of the fastest for the 1974 running of the National 500 Stock Car Race. This is the most famous number in the sport of stock car racing. In the American South, you see it on kids' T-shirts, on people's personal cars, and they never even have to put the name with it because everybody knows that 43 eternally is the number of the king of the stock car racers, Richard Petty. There's an irony today, however, right here in his home state. Richard Petty has never won a race on the Charlotte Motor Speedway. He's never done it at all. It's even more important to him today because victory is vital in his battle with Cale Yarbrough for the year-long Grand National Point Standings Championship. There's another aspect. In addition to going against all the regulars of the Grand National Tour, he'll be going against, from Indianapolis, Johnny Rutherford, the winner of this year's 500, and the great A.J. Foyt, triple winner of the Indianapolis race. It should be quite a day, but on this particular occasion, there's interest not only at the front of the line, but also all the way in the back. That's where our colleague Chrissy Kotomaki is standing right now. Right, Jim. Well, in 26 seasons of Grand National Racing, a last place starter has never won. That could change today with Buddy Baker, a hometown product, and the man who has taken more money out of Charlotte Motor Speedway than any other driver is starting in last place. Baker was put back here because of a technical problem and now is concerned about his fans, his family in the stands, and how he will look on the track. Baker had the fastest car in practice, not necessarily in qualifying, and is considered a serious threat, but he has 41 men in front of him. Fastest of them all in qualifying, however, was David Pearson, right here, sitting on the pole. Well, there's the age-old cry. By the way, the specific story that Chris Economaki was referring to has to do with Buddy Baker's tires. Now, although he was fastest in practice, third fastest in qualifying, his car owner, Bud Moore, was still very dissatisfied with the qualifying speed, which was about two miles an hour slower than David Pearson. So Bud, although he knew it was definitely uh, in violation of NASCAR rules, decided to change the particular set of tires that he had on the car. Well, well, they saw that, they knew about it, obviously, and a penalty had to be decided on. What they decided to do was to put Buddy, as they have, all the way at the back of the pack. When we return in a minute, we'll be getting the green flag at Charlotte. We're back again at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, not quite ready for the start of the National 500. A little bit earlier, Chrissy Kotomaki asked Buddy Baker how long it had been since he started at the back of the pack. Well, it's been a long, long time. I can't remember uh, ever starting really last, except, uh, I guess, in 1959, and that's quite a ways back, but uh, somebody's got to start there. The main thing is not to stay there too long. All right, now let's set the field as they near the starting line. In the first row, 21 on the pole is David Pearson. Next to him, 43, Richard Petty. In the second row, 88, Donnie Allison. And number 11, Cale Yarborough. Yarborough down low and uh, Donnie up high. On the third row, we have A.J. Foyt in car number 28. That's the yellow one, up high. And below him, Earl Ross of Canada. In the next row, Bobby Allison is in car number 12, along with Walter Ballard in number 30. Then Dan Daughtry and Darrell Waltrip. They're very close to... Getting the green flag, it's out, and they're racing at Charlotte. Coming into the first turn, Richard Petty up high, and the red roof down low, number 21, is David Pearson, trying to hold on to that pole position, and so far he's doing it. Cale Yarbrough tucking into third place, that's Donnie Allison up high, and A.J. Foyt in the yellow car. It's an important race for Cale, Jim. He's got to stay close to Petty if he wants the title. Okay, now we have a camera isolated on Buddy Baker. He's already passed five cars. That makes six, by the way, on the first lap. He's passed seven cars already. Look at him go. He's passed eight of them now. We're still in the first lap. He's passed nine cars. And Buddy Baker is really flying from the back of the pack. Now up on the lead is David Pearson stretching it just a little bit over the rest. Donnie looking a little restless down there in third place, but tucking in with A.J. Foyt in the yellow car behind him. And then Cale Yarbrough, who's dropped back to fifth. Bobby Allison at the tail end of the leaders here in the Matador. Okay, still David Pearson on front to set them for you. Richard Petty is second in the red car with the blue on it, number 43. Donnie Allison is third of the racing Allison brothers from Hueytown, Alabama. A.J. Foyt is fourth. Cale Yarborough fifth. And Bobby Allison sixth. Those are the leaders. All right, we could have a change, though, because look at Donnie Allison down low. He's going to try to pass Petty, and he does. A.J. Foyt following him through, and Petty has dropped to fourth. Pearson won 155. Oh, there's a crash. I'm sorry, Chris. A tremendous crash in the home stretch here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there are eight, nine, maybe ten cars involved in this thing. Boy, oh, boy. 
Oh. This is a bad one. No fires, no fires as yet, but at two, two cars at least went through the guardrail, as you can see. Uh, there's a car in motion. That's Joe Frisone heading up the track the wrong way. Uh, up to now, that's been a no-no. Oh, look at Marty Robbins' car. Badly damaged in the front. The well-known country and western singer, but he's moving inside the car. Uh, they'll, they'll be out after him very quickly, I'm sure. Marty, you know, has had open-heart surgery in the past, believe it or not. Two occasions, and they're probably concerned about that. He started in the back row with Buddy Baker. And there's Neil Castle's number 06, which went through the rail, and Jim Vandiver's number 31, which was torn up substantially by the remaining rail. And this has been a costly accident from an equipment standpoint. And Buddy Baker is right in the middle of it, and there is number 96, Richard Childress, walking away from his car. He appears to have uh, no scratches, no bruises. Looks like he's all right. And there is Buddy, or what's left of it. He's coming up the pit road the wrong way, and he's going to the pit to see if they can't affect repairs. That car's battered on both sides. Here's, let's take another look at it, Chris, see if we can see what happened here. There is Buddy with our camera isolated on him, moving up uh, in the white car with the blue stripe down the middle. He's coming up on Dick Brooks, and a little dust kicked up there, Jim, as Cuckoo Marlin breaks in front of Richard Brooks. Buddy breaks, you can see the skid marks on the track there, and there it begins. So it, it lo looked like Cuckoo kind of caught up in front, and look at those cars going straight through the guardrail. Uh, a great testament to the way these cars are built. Uh, not really like the car you're driving on the road, but almost like tanks inside with the roll cage, with the many protective devices for the drivers. Ten cars involved in that accident, uh, Jim. And here's Frisson now coming up the pit road again. Here's another slow motion look at Cuckoo Mile at the bottom of the screen, Dick Trickle in the blue car, Richard Brooks in the yellow car, and Buddy Beck on the outside coming around very fast. Mind you, now they're going up better than 155 miles an hour when suddenly the dust comes up and everybody gets on the brakes. Everybody that sees this dust doesn't know what's in it, Jim. It could be another car. There, Cuckoo moves up in front of Brooks. Baker hits the brakes. Look at the skid marks now. Under Baker's tires, the car swerves. You can't steer under heavy braking. And he tags the rear end of Brooks' car, sending the two cars into a spin. And this started the whole mess. I have a feeling there's going to be a little name calling and blame throwing down in the pits because really it looked like the dust kind of uh, started it with Cuckoo then cutting up in front of Richard Brooks and everybody else just trying to do the best they could. The cars down low up high, the entire track is blocked. The hot boys, the fast men are on the way down the back straightaway, so they're out of it. The yellow light, of course, comes on. The yellow flag comes out. Excuse me, Chris. Down. This is Marty Robbins with blood considerably. Uh, flowing down the front of his uniform. We're told, however, it's just a cut on his forehead. That's what they think so far. And he is the only man who has been cut or injured in any way in this crash. There's Buddy. Bud Moore says the car's done. So that's it. The sprint of Buddy Baker didn't last very long. He had passed 10 cars, but now they'll tow it back to the garage area and hope to fight another day. Okay, so that's the story. The yellow flag's still out, and we'll be back for more of the racing at Charlotte, North Carolina. The yellow flag is still out at the Charlotte Motor Speedway after a 10-car crash, which miraculously injured only one driver, and he apparently not seriously. That's the car, Marty Robbins, who's now in the hospital. Uh, Chris Economaki is down with Buddy Baker in the pits. Let's get his comments. Early exit, Buddy, for you and Marty. Uh, how did you see it? Well, I really don't know what happened with all in a long line there, and I saw somebody go across the dirt, and we started slowing up, and I jumped to the inside to miss the slower cars, and I saw, I don't even know who it was, somebody come across, and I dodged to miss him, and when I did, it threw everybody, you know. Are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. I just, I was taking my time, and, and uh, the car was working real well. It had a good chassis under it today. I, this race and uh, we'll we'll be back stronger next time i guess so that's the comment from an obviously disappointed buddy baker chris now moving over he's going to get somebody else here i think he has dick brooks right now let's go down how did it begin in your view well everything i seen was i was right behind cuckoo marlin or i was kind of coming up on him and, and uh, there was a big cloud of dust dust clear to the wall from the inside of the wall and, and everybody slowed down a whole bunch you know i mean really trying to get like when you see dust like that, the first thing you think of is there's somebody in there sideways, you know. And so everybody's slowing down, slowing down. And I kind of moved to the outside of him trying to get stopped. And uh, then I got hit in the rear and I got sideways. And from there on, it was just everything I seen was dust and, you know, and cars going by. No one seems to know who it was that started it. You have any idea? Well, somebody run off on the dirt. Now, I, the, guy, the guy that done it probably doesn't even know. But what I seen of it was all because nobody could see through the dust and everybody trying to stop and... 
and uh, somebody didn't get stopped. Well, our replay sure seemed to authenticate what he said, but the guardrail has now been repaired, and the green is coming out. They're racing again at Charlotte, and we have new leaders. Darrell Waltrip in car number 95 and Earl Ross at number 52 did not pit under the yellow, and so they are the leaders now with A.J. Foyt in third place. They're taking advantage of the lap money being paid here today. Ross, a Canadian, won the Martinsville race the week before to become the first foreigner ever to win in Grand National competition. And there is Earl Ross going past Darrell Waltrip right now. A.J. about to make a move on Waltrip, and he moves into second. By the way, we have... Uh, the ability to monitor the conversations on the two-way radio between Richard Petty and his pit crew, and at some time during the race, we're going to try to do that today, a little innovation. But there is Earl Ross, the leader of the race, the Canadian who's made such an, a recent impact on the stock car circuit, as Chris indicated. Ross is shooting for the Rookie of the Year award, and here he is with A.J. Foyt behind him. He must be thinking big today. Well, A.J. never thinks small, and there he goes, past Earl Ross, A.J. Foyt, back on top. Three-time winner of the Indianapolis 500, and a frequent winner whenever he makes these visits down south for the NASCAR races. Richard Petty's in fourth. You see him uh, there in the blue car with the red stripe, number 43, and he is going past Darrell Waltrip, soon to move up, we would think, on Earl Ross. So very shortly, we could have a confrontation between two of the greatest names in the history of any kind of motor car racing, A.J. Foyt and Richard Petty. From a brand standpoint, Jim, it's Chevrolet. Oh, oh. That's uh, Richie Patch, number 98, spinning. So we're going to have another yellow here. And look out, the uh, small chain reaction. It was Bill Dennis, 59. There goes Bill Champion. He's headed for the wall and does hit it, but rather softly. Well, the yellow came, the light came on immediately, and everybody got slowed down. Unfortunately, there's nothing but cosmetic damage here. This, I think, would be a good time to tune in on Richard Petty as he talks to his pit crew about what happened out there. What Let's do that. What happened on that caution, Richard? What happened on that rig? Uh, 98 spun out. I don't know. Something happened in front of him. He spun and, you know, another one or two got in it. I think uh, one of them was still over but I think he just choked it. I can't, you know, he didn't beat it up bad. Did you have to go through it? Yeah. Okay, we want to gas you up. We want to gas you up. Okay. Uh, Jim, I don't drive stock cars, and I wish Richard Petty wouldn't do expert commentary. <laughs> he did it rather well there. We know he's going to gas up. We, we suspect everybody else will, so we're going to go away and return in a minute. They're racing again at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the National 500. Jim McKay here with Chrissy Kotomaki, and what a battle is shaping up at the moment. A.J. Foyt is the leader, but right behind him is Cale Yarborough in car number 11. Cale, who is battling for the year-long NASCAR championship with Richard Petty. The owner of those cars, uh, Jim, are both former drivers. Hoss Ellington owns the number 28, and Junior Johnson owns the number 11 car. Junior, one of the most famous names in the history of NASCAR racing. There's Cale making a move on AJ, side by side. This is the kind of racing that's hard to find anywhere else in the world. Look at this. That's what they call dough handle to dough handle, isn't it, Chris? And that's right, wheel well to wheel well. You know, and there's AJ getting a bit ahead of Cale. The thing about this type of racing that amazes me is bitter rivals like these fellows, yet the ultimate confidence in the man alongside, knowing that they're not going to make a mistake that will give them trouble. Okay, so it's still A.J. Foyt and Cale Yarborough up in front. Richard Petty back in fourth place at the moment behind Bobby Allison and Donnie Allison also thick in the fight here. Richard seemed to drop back a little bit, but up on front, the battle goes on. Cale diving low this time. Looks like he could make it. They're in traffic. Still side by side, and there goes Cale Yarborough, taking the lead from A.J. Foyt, and not many people do that any place, any time. Richard has moved into third now. So he's in the battle. And remember again that it's Cale and Richard who are battling out for the year-long NASCAR championship as well as for the win in this race. As an interesting point, Jim, David Pearson, who won here in May, has fallen far behind with problems of one sort or another. And he started the race on the pole. You see Richard Petty moving up on A.J. Foyt now as Cale Yarbrough continues to lead the race. There is Cale out in front, who was one of the big names on this circuit, went to USAC for a while and then returned, and this year is having a great season. And there is Richard passing A.J. Foyt. So A.J. has dropped to third, and Donnie Allison is moving up alongside A.J. right now to challenge Richard. Allison has had a poor season, and he's come back strong in this Tigard car to give these boys a run for the money. That's his brother, Bobby, two cars behind in the Matador. In and the here, pits, Bobby Isaac. 
You know, this car, number 17 K and K Dodge is using the small block Chrysler engine just as Petty uses, and it's obviously that's what's giving trouble. Okay, but now it's Richard Petty and Cale Yarbrough. So, the issue has become very simple. They're battling for the year-long championship, they're battling for the race, and they're side by side. And here again you have that situation where two drivers that are rivals but who respect one another are not afraid to hook up in a great duel. Petty's down low. He likes a higher groove, and he comes off of the turn here. See the car gets a little bit wormy. He, he prefer the situation were reversed and he were on the outside and Kale were down low. The high speed groove here at this one and a half mile high bank Charlotte Motor Speedway is the middle or top groove. But there are two grooves. There's more than one depending on which you prefer. Richard, by the way, is squiggling a little bit there. Well, that's it. The car gets, as they say in this business, a little wormy, but still they're just door handle to door handle. Picture telling its own story in the National 500 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, Jim, the NASCAR rules have equalized the competition. Here we have a Dodge and a Chevrolet running at the same speed. The Mercury and the Matador is in this battle. So the difference today is in the driver. Excuse me, Chris, there's another spin. It's number 93. That's Jackie Rogers grazing the wall, not hitting it too hard, and it looks like everybody else is getting by safely. Well, Jackie's another one of these drivers that's looking for that $10,000 Rookie of the Year award. He's a former crew chief that decided to get behind the wheel himself. He's from Wilmington, North Carolina, and he's an orphan. He's a bit of sympathy generated for this fellow. Well, Jackie looks like he's going to try to get back in the fight, however, as the yellow comes out again at Charlotte. There you see the yellow light flashing in the corners, giving the drivers the indication, and everybody is heading for the pits. This is where the precision of the pit crews will take over again. As for us... We'll be back here, of course, but right now we're going to head for Las Vegas, Nevada for the National Wrist Wrestling Championships, going from speed to strength. And here's Frank Gifford. We return to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Jim McKay here with Chrissy Konamaki, and a tremendous six-car battle is underway in the National 500. There is the way they stand, and look at the cars. The current leader of the moment is Donnie Allison. Cale Yarborough down low and up high, David Pearson, who had dropped back in the early going, but he has really moved back into it again, Chris. And that newcomer, Darrell Walter, was right in there with number 95, mixing with the big boy. A big crowd on hand, announced as more than 60,000 people, and going high is David Pearson, trying to take the lead from Donnie Allison. Cale Yarborough right behind him in car number 11, Richard Petty in 43. Pearson was helped by the yellow flags to make up some of the ground he had lost earlier. Now he's very much a factor. Back in fourth place, Bobby Allison has moved ahead of Richard Petty, who's dropping back just a little bit. Side by side for the lead, though, it's Donnie Allison and David Pearson. Pearson up high. Now they're coming up on Frank Warren. He's a slower car. Watch him get out of the way. He's a respected gentleman-type driver, and he'll give them no trouble. There is David going past Frank Warren. Donnie Allison just behind. Oh, he's a good 20 feet behind. That's the furthest they get behind in this race, it seems. Cale Yarborough on his tail. Jim, from a nameplate standpoint, it's a Mercury leading two Chevrolets, a Matador and a Dodge, and that's variety. And again, classic racing. Look at Donnie Allison down low, David Pearson almost against the wall as they battle head-to-head. -head. Donnie trying for the lead again. Looks like he could make it. He's made it. When one of those drivers moves aside one way or the other, there's always somebody behind him to move in and take their place. And you saw who moved right along with Donnie Allison was Cale Yarbrough. He's now in second in car number 11. And there's Bobby Allison in the red, white, and blue car, also moving past David Pearson. Say, is David just dropping back a little bit, do you think? Well, he's off the pace there. He could be in trouble. As here comes Petty by him on the inside of Waltrip, moving up quickly from behind. That's right. He's not doing a complete slowdown, because you can see that uh, Richard Petty's still having some problems passing him. But David Pearson is definitely going slower as the battle continues on the front between Donnie Allison and Cale Yarborough and Bobby Allison now right in the thick of it as he drops down low. And Bobby Allison, like uh, Cale Yarborough and A.J. Foyt, are, is driving an ex-race driver's car. This number 12, owned by Roger Penske. Okay, and now Bobby getting ahead of Cale, and we have the brothers Allison. Donnie out in front, Bobby second. The racing goes on at Charlotte, and we'll be back in another minute. On a lovely autumn day, we're back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Jim McKay with Chrissy Konamaki. And look at the battle for the lead, brother against brother. Bobby Allison now in front of his brother Donnie, but now Donnie moving alongside with Richard Petty. Immediately behind them, Richard 
was laying about fifth and has now moved back into third and is challenging for the lead. Cale Yarber on car number 11, right behind Richard Petty, and those are the two battling for the year-long NASCAR championship. If there's any brotherly love between these two, now is the time to show it because they could hook up together in a draft, which is exactly what they're doing now, and try and put an interval on that second group of two cars. Bobby leading Donnie, uh, the older brother leading the younger brother, and now if they hook up bumper to bumper, they could pull away just a little. But you said it looks like that's exactly what they're trying to set up right now. In other words, these brothers will work as a team, although technically they're not teammates until, let's, let's say, the last lap. Right, until it comes time to go for the money. And now David oh. Pearson yep. in the pits. There's that trouble. They've changed the outside tires, Jim. They're changing the inside tires. This is under the green, and it's going to put him a lap or perhaps more down. So David was on the pole at the beginning of the race, dropped back early, then got back, regained the lead, but now he's lost a lot of space. Here's A.J. Point, however, getting back into the battle, challenging Richard Petty. A.J. in car number 28, passing Richard Petty. This is absolutely classic motor racing. Out of the picture, Jim, Charlie Glotzbach, Benny Parsons, and Johnny Rutherford are the others in the top ten, and they're in the same lap. Okay, but up in front, it's still the Allison brothers. Bobby in front, Donnie second. Cale Yarborough third now. And A.J. Boyd fourth with Richard Betty fifth. There are the five top cars all in your picture at this moment. The speeds, Jim, on the track are better than 150 miles an hour, but the race average is only 111 because of the many yellow flags that have slowed it down. A good look at the three-time winner of the Indianapolis 500 down to challenge the NASCAR boys at their own game. He's done it successfully before, A.J. Foyt. There's not, never been anyone today, Jim, able to pull away to any kind of a significant lead. Nope. Maybe uh, 200 feet has been the widest interval between first and second since this green flag wave. And again, it is worth another mention, I think, how close these cars travel together and at such tremendous speed. It means these fellows trust each other very much. There's A.J. challenging Cale Yarborough. This is great racing. It's under NASCAR sanction with headquarters in Daytona Beach. And tomorrow, the American 500 comes off at the North Carolina Motor Speedway at Rockingham. And the season finale comes off in Ontario, California on the 24th of November with another great 500-mile event. Well, boy, it couldn't be any greater than this one. Donnie Allison, now the leader, with Bobby Allison in second place. The younger brother leading the older brother at this point. Cale Yarborough still third. And keeping alive his hopes for the NASCAR championship this year. A.J. Boyd is fourth. Richard Petty, who has won four NASCAR titles, going for an unprecedented fifth, is behind Cale. This could be a big day for Cale if he can finish ahead of Petty. It sure can, and there's supporters of both cheering in the grandstand. Of course, this is North Carolina, and that's petty country. Look at Bobby going by and taking the lead as they're in traffic. Cecil Gordon down Ooh. low with a wrinkle left front fender. He's watching his mirror and gets out of their way. Smart thing for him to do. Racing still continues at Charlotte, and again, we'll return. He's been among the leaders all day. Washing of the windshield, throwing the water on there. AJ is always helping out. His mind works all the time. Out on the track, the leaders have changed. Bobby Allison is in front, but Darrell Waltrip is now second with Cale Yarbrough third. Uh, Jim, in addition to AJ, Donnie Allison and Richard Petty have gone to the pits under the green, and when Petty stopped, they lifted his hood, which could mean trouble. So that's why we have this change in the standings. It's been a while since the yellow, so they're having to pit under the green, and that always costs you plenty of time on the racetrack. Now here is Cale Yarborough trying to move back into second place, racing with Darrell Waltrip. Yet another matchup. We've had one matchup after another all afternoon. Notice how much room Waltrip gives Yarborough. The all pros are in there like three inches apart. Waltrip, fairly new to super speedway racing, gives him about three feet. A.J. Boyd, by the way, was not making a routine stop. He is still in the pits. It's trouble. And in fact, they are pushing the car away. It looks like the afternoon is at an end. It certainly is for A.J. Foyt being pushed back into the garage area. Chris is going to try to go over and get a word with A.J. He's usually steaming when he goes out of the race. It takes him a little while to calm down, but we'll see. Bobby Allison, still the leader, and now Cale Yarborough challenging him for first place. Some of the best motor racing we've seen in a long time here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's a beautiful day, not too hot, however. The engine should be behaving pretty well. Okay, I think Chris is uh, down there with AJ right now. Let's go down to Chris C. Konamaki in the pits. 
Yeah, first you drive and then you push it, AJ, on a bad day, right? That's right, Chris. Uh, What's the trouble? Well, uh, we lost the cylinder for some reason. Uh, I come in, oil pressure fluctuating, and I stopped, and uh, they put oil in, and I was running on seven cylinders, and uh, I don't know what happened, really. Well, he didn't know what happened, but he is sure out of the race. And now here is Cale Yarbrough down low, going for the lead again against Bobby Allison. Allison taking the higher groove, as you see. Cale with his nose in front right now as they come up on a slower car. And now Bobby, perhaps three inches in front. Bobby's got to keep first place for a while, if he can. Bobby Allison, still the leader in the Matador. Cale Yarbrough in second place. Richard Petty, remember, well back at the moment, as is Donnie Allison, because of pit stops under the green earlier. This is the two-car race. It was a six-car race, now it's two, but perhaps only for the moment. Cale again, making the challenge. It's really uh, unbelievable racing here. Back and forth with the lead changing hand, time after time among all these great drivers on the NASCAR circuit. It could be anybody's race. And we could see more pit stops under the green, remember. No yellow coming out here, and uh, the pit stop situation becomes critical at this point. Well, that's when the pit men really come into their own, because the pit crew could win or lose a race for any one of these front runners. Quick reminder, this Monday night at 9 Eastern time, the Green Bay Packers against the Chicago Bears on NFL Monday Night Football over most of these ABC stations. Bobby Allison, Jim, is not afraid to move high on the turns, high so far that he's in the gray. It's usually considered loose up there, but in the last couple of laps, he's gone way up to the top of the track in that number 12 car. Yes, he has, and now Cale seems to be sliding a little more towards the top, and here comes Richard, number 43, Richard Petty, into the pits for yet another stop under the green. Boy, he sure has a tough time trying to win that first race here in Charlotte. He has never won a race on this track. Only... 26 times, Jim, he's come to the line here without ever a victory. Look out, here comes Cale Yarborough into the pits. Junior Johnson on the hood and a smoke, and they're lifting the hood, and Cale may have trouble. So that puts Bobby out in front all by himself right now, and Richard's having trouble getting started, Chris. Oh, the action now centers on the pits here. And a spin out there. That's Johnny Rutherford, the Indianapolis 500 winner this year in car number one, coming down in the infield, but getting it under control. Ooh, that uh, guardrail wasn't too far away. And another car was involved. This is uh, Frank Warren in car number 79. Frank is all right. His car up against the guardrail, however, appears to be pretty badly damaged. And there is Johnny Rutherford safely getting out of his car, so he's okay also. Uh, Chris has moved over with Cale Yarborough now. Let's go down. Well, it's not the kind of day you'd hope it would be, was it, Cale? No, I wasn't, Chris. Uh, I don't know, somewhere wrong. The engine somewhere just started smoking real bad. It's still running all right, but... There's something going somewhere, so we decided the best thing for everybody's parking. A serious, if not final, blow to Cale Yarborough's chances for the year-long championship. And there is Rutherford's car being towed away. We'll be back for the conclusion of the National 500, again now to Las Vegas, Nevada. The National Wrist Wrestling Championships. And our colleague, Frank Giffen. We're back again at Charlotte, and it's fantastic racing. One of the most exciting we've seen in a long time. Jim McKay here with Chrissy Kanamaki, and there have been changes in the leaders. It's Darrell Waltrip in front now, and Richard Petty, whom you see down low, is actually trying to unlap himself. He's had to make a couple of stops under the green. He's been having engine problems, but his car is still running very fast as he unlaps himself from Darrell Waltrip. Donnie Allison is in second place, and Bobby Allison is third. David Pearson is fourth right now. David, who started on the pole, fell way back in the early going, is now right back in the thick of contention. At this moment, Chris Kanamaki is down in the pits with the chief mechanic for Petty, Dale Inman. Dale, with Kale out of it, does this change the way Richard will run the rest of the race? We've been with running the, the race just as hard as we can, and that's what we're going to continue to do. We're about... Well, Richard is now talking to Dale Inman on the intercom radio. We'll get back with him when he's through talking with his driver. He'll be with us in just a moment. I really don't know what's happening. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Okay, I'll have somebody to check. We've lost about 500 RPMs on the engine. It's skipping real bad, Chris, as I told you a while ago. But we've been running just as hard as we can. That's what we're going to continue to do. But it was a lucky break for us that Kale fell out because he was leading the race. Why, why wouldn't you slow him down a little bit to ensure his finishing and get those points? That wouldn't ensure the finish. It's skipping now, so if it's a valve or something, it can go just as good running slow as it will running hard. So we're going to hang in there just as hard as we can go. Okay, a busy deal, and explaining the situation in the petty pit. 
So there you had it from the chief mechanic and from the driver himself as we monitored the two-way radio of Richard Petty and his pit crew. You saw some smoke coming from the back of his car. It's definite, as you heard him say himself. He's having some kind of trouble. He's not sure what. But now back up in front, we have uh, Daryl Waltrip, and we have Bobby Allison passing him in car number 12, and Bobby Allison again has taken the lead. It's an Allison sandwich right now. Bobby in first and Donnie in third with Daryl Waltrip in between, but Waltrip does not want to keep it that way. He wants to get in front again. Moving up alongside Bobby. And there's Donnie almost in between them and then dropping back. And David Pearson in fourth place. Remember, he's right in it now. Darrell Waltrip, Jim, is giving a great account of himself here today in that number 95 car. For a newcomer, he's really running with the big boys very well. He certainly is. Two of the most experienced men in the sport, three as a matter of fact, all around him, Bobby and Donnie, the brothers Allison, and David Pearson. And look, another spin up against the wall is one car, number 41, Grant Adscox, T-boned by Remo, started number 83. That's the most serious crash of the day. I hope those fellas are all right. There's a fire in the engine of Adcox. You can see the flames leaping up there. The men are moving. Boy. Yeah. Boy. Stott, Stott coming out. Stott, they're both short, chunky men. Stott from Iowa, Adcox from Tennessee, and Adcox is dead. Oh, he's groggy. Boy, that could be dangerous with another car coming by, right? That's right, that's right. But he, uh, he's gonna, his right arm seems to be hanging down at the side. He's not moving it or anything. And Stott's, and here's another look at it. Adcox's car back to us, absolutely no place for Stott to go. Notice the damage done to the cars, and yet the protective measures built into these Grand National cars are such that the drivers are restrained in their seats and can get out under their own power. You know, this leaves 17 cars in the race. Uh, 15 or more have been wrecked today. It's been a very destructive event from an equipment standpoint. Yes, it has. And here comes Richard Petty into the pits again. Lots of action down there. The Petty... Oh, there's, a, there's fire. Must have been... Looks like some kind of gas line. There. This could be bad. Are the men still in there? I think all the crew is clear. A serious situation in the Petty pits. Jim, those firemen deserve a pat on the back. They were right there on top of it. They didn't even delay anything. And Petty's gone out. Notice the hood on Petty's car up in the rear corner. Now that's going to upset the aerodynamics of that car. I think there's any danger of it uh, coming loose. Well, maybe we can tune in. There's Maurice Petty. Let's see if we can hear him talking to Richard. There's no fire. You must stop again. It just backfired on his gas in a pit. Oh, God. Nobody got burned, did it? No, it, it just flared up. Uh, there was gas in the pits and it backfired. Okay, I'm coming in right now. Well, you can hear Richard Petty. They've, they've got white stuff all in here. You can't see us, Richard. Be careful, you can't see us. Come on, we can see. Come on, it's cleared off. Get the speed, get the fire out there. There's nothing happen. <laughs> hey, you ever see this? It's a screwed up mess. Well, you can hear, first of all, uh, his first concern was for his picture. He said, anybody get hurt? And now he's just a professional out there. What a screwed up mess. Cool, calm, professional. Remember, he, with his car, the engine's giving him trouble. Well, here's Ramos Stott's wreck. His hood up, he's trying for a fifth championship. Still out there. On the track, they're racing again, and Bobby Allison got caught going into the pits just as the green came out, so he's almost a lap down. But look at David Pearson in car number 21, now moving up on Donnie. Donnie Allison is the leader, David Pearson second, Darrell Waltrip now third. And Bobby, remember, has lost almost a lap. There, you see Bobby Allison at the lower part of your screen, just went out of it. And the battle for the lead continues as it has all afternoon, but the principles have continually changed. It's one fell against another, and then that changes. Now it's Donnie and David Pearson and Daryl Walter. Those three. Richard Petty back there in fourth place, trying hard to gain on the leaders, Jim. And there goes David Pearson taking the lead from Donnie Allison. It took him such a long while to work his way back up to the front, but now he has. And don't bet against him holding it. However, the battle is still a pitched one. It's still very, very close. We'll be right back. We're nearing the end of the race at Charlotte, and the battle goes on. Richard Petty's back in the thick of it, despite all his problems. But it's car number 21. David Pearson, you saw, in the lead, 88. Donnie Allison is second. Darrell Waltrip third, but there comes Petty challenging Waltrip. Petty just won't give up. Remember again, he's never won a race on this major racetrack in his own home state in all the tries that he's made. 
Uh, but he's not out of it despite a faulty engine, despite problems with the hood, despite a fire in the pits. Richard Petty is still giving it a shot, and now he's trying to move past Donnie Allison and get into second place and then take out after David Pearson. There are less than four laps to go in this race now. There have been nine yellow flags, Jim, slowing this race way down. There's Richard Petty going by Donnie Allison. He sure is, and now there's only one car for him to chase. David Pearson, if he can catch him, he'll win his first race at Charlotte. P Patty is the consummate pro. Here he's got a car on seven cylinders, a hood that's not working properly, and yet he is closing on the leader. How oh. he does it, I'll never know. By the way, Bobby Allison, who looks like he's in fifth place right now, is not. He has fallen even further behind than he was and is now more than a full lap down. So it's David Pearson, the leader. And it's Richard Petty smoking, but still in second place, smoking metaphorically and figuratively. In third place is Donnie Allison, but it's beginning to look more and more like a two-car battle to the finish. And whether or not Richard can catch him, catch him certainly is a problem. With the engine problems, with the aerodynamic problem with the hood, it would seem doubtful. There's Donnie Allison still third and still very close to Richard Petty. Pearson's problems have been kind that could be completely fixed during his pit stop, but Petty's problems have been the kind that linger. Less than two laps to go now. Petty still looking like the principal challenger, but to be truthful about it, it looks like David may be able to go to victory with not too many problems from this point on. There's only been one point in this race today where anybody has had what could be called a comfortable lead, and that is right now. He'll soon be getting the white flag, which means one lap to go, and after that, the checkers. Jim, the speed's under 120 miles an hour, which means this is the slowest national 500 in a dozen years. There was the white flag, one lap to go for David Pearson. The uphill battle looks like a success right now. All he has to do is negotiate a couple more turns. He can almost coast in, not quite at this point, but almost. Richard Petty is still about the same behind, 1.4 seconds is the last clocking. There you see the difference between the two of them as David Pearson heads for victory. Turn three, one more to go. There you get an idea of the speed as the spectators flash by and the objects in the background. David Pearson coming to the checker has won the National 500 at Charlotte. What a tremendous performance. And the jinx keeps Richard Petty out of victory lane again. 27 consecutive starts and no victory for Petty. The Wood Brothers, the most famous pit crew in racing, rejoicing. It's their car. We'll be back. <laughs> 